Uh, hello everyone and welcome to another video by the tank index me and uh, I know I had didn't upload Friday I apologize uh, mainly I just got busy with stuff you know um, I just had some personal matters to attend you know school just got overwhelmed because once again they've put us on online school because I I don't know why because we had like three COVID cases so at that point I don't know why you don't just permanently close the schools but okay um, regardless Today we're going to talk about the Vickers Light Tanks 1 through 5. This is kind of one of those bundle videos, mainly because I could make a separate video on each of these, but they would be very, very short videos, and I really don't see the point of that. So instead, I'm just going to bundle up the first five together, be Mark 6 and 7. I mean, they could each have separate videos, you know, stuff like the Harry Hopkins, for example. Um, but these, you know, I think I'd all just kind of bundle them up together. I mean, there's a reason their Wikipedia page is also bundled up like this. Um... So to provide some backstory, the British military in the interwar period had really developed a desire for it. They wanted two light tracked vehicles, you know, two light tanks. They wanted one for the infantry that could basically just be a mobile machine gun nest and a larger one for the tank corps itself. So the Carden Lloyd tankette would serve the infantry role. Carden would then move on and keep stay with Vickers and develop a two-man turreted tank for the tank corps. It would be called the Carden Mark VI. Um, and it was basically another you know, Carden Lloyd tank that made in very few numbers, which would serve as the prototype for the Vickers light tanks. Um, for the record, I don't know if this is an experimental model or not, but it's a good sort of example of it. Um, the This Mark VII pr experimental model was armed with a machine gun along with having a maximum speed of 35 miles per hour, which is pretty good. Um, it had a leaf spring suspension with two wheels on either side to give it the suspension some extra strength, as you can see up there. Um, it, the Mark VI would really be the last car, successful car in light tank yet, and this one really, would really just be a prototype model for further development, and it would lead to the Mark I. I'm not, once again, I'm not sure this is the Mark I, because I, I couldn't actually definitively find any Mark I photos, but this is sort of, sort of close to what it would look like. Um, Based on the Mark VII, not VI, sorry, um, it, it did differ. It had a 14mm base of armor and a lower speed of 30 miles per hour. Um, it did weigh about 5 tons, though, which is definitely increased for the, like, what, 1.5 ton, I think, or maybe 3 ton. I think 1.5 ton current light tank it. Um, it looked, obviously, had a tur larger turret now and a bigger superstructure. Only about 4 or 5 would be made in our experimental one, but, um, like, 4 or 5 more 1A variants would be made. Having a horseman suspension with horizontal coil springs, um, replacing the basic leaf springs of the first model. 5 of these would be made, and... You know, four of these would be sent to India in 1931, um, basically for just some trials for how tanks would serve in the colonies, um, getting, having some alterations fitted for the hotter climate. Um, onto the Mark Seven. This is really uh, sorry, not the Mark Seven, the Mark Two. This is really the sort of recognizable Vickers light tank. Um, you know, um, it, obviously as you can see here, the main point is a hex hexagonal turret. Um, and a 66 horsepower Rolls Royce engine uh, instead of the prior 59 horsepower Meadows one, and a Wilson preselector gearbox, as well as a very iconic rectangular turret. Um, because I guess slopes are too expensive. The machine gun now had a pistol grip, which made it obviously better to handle. Um, some tanks were made for trials in India in 1931 had a 85 horsepower Meadows engine. Um, there would be 16. Base Mark II made from 1929 by Vickers, 2192A by the Royal Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal in Woolwick, and 21 Mark IIBs made by Vickers again. Um, it would be one of the first tanks with cemented tank armor, and many would still be in India by World War II. Um, you know, these were made in much bigger number. The, the variants really had sort of mo more minor changes, but, you know, they did have some variants for this version. Onto the Mark III, which in my opinion is really a bigger Mark II. Um, the Mark III had the Horseman suspension again, which was easier to repair in the field. It was cheaper, it was compact and lightweight. So I mean, a cheap tank like this, it's exactly what Vickers wants to sell. Um, it had an 88 horsepower Meadows engine and had a thinner turret than the last one. Um, 42 would be pr produced from 1934, 36 of these being sent to Egypt. The Royal Netherlands East India Army would order 73 Mark III Bs in 1937, which would be used against the Japanese in World War II, because I mean, at that point, they were kind of just throwing whatever they had at the Japanese. And Belgium would also use this sort of as the base, as you can say, almost like an inspiration for their T-15 light tank. Um, then we have the Mark IV. The Mark IV would weigh a bit above 5 tons, which is the standard weight for all these tanks, and would be really made for a training tank. 
34 would be built from 1934, and they were technically around for World War II, but by that point, they were kind of removed from service, because, I mean, they were pretty useless unless you literally had nothing, no other tanks. Um, and now we have the Mark V. Um, this tank would really finally change the two-man crew that the last ones had to a three-man, where the turret now had a gunner separate from the commander, thank God. Um, strangely, the gunner was supposed to operate the radio, not the commander. You think that the commander would operate the radio, but I guess not. Um, a 50 Vickers gun was added to the .303, so technically it was stronger than a tank hatch. Though at that point, I mean, it's really slim pickings on which one's better. Um, it was heavier and longer than the Mark IV, with, but the speed was raised to 30 miles per hour. 22 would be produced in total by in 1936, though I mean, at that point, tank kits were... Yeah, I mean, at, at least I have like an auto cannon on it, but um, whatever. As for the service by this of this tank, um, by World War II, they were still seen in service in India, Egypt, and the Dutch East Indies. Basically, all the nation's colonies would have these tanks. Um, it had high speed and cross-country capability, so they were a pretty good compromise, really, between an armored car and a tank. Um, in the interwar period, they would be used mainly to fight rebellions and insurrections in places like India. And by 1941, most tanks that were still in the UK were just sent to East Africa to fight against Italy because you need to, you know, reserve the actual good tanks for Europe. Um, they saw good success there, mainly because, for one thing, they had very good cooperation with Australian infantry and their armored cars in a, you know, combined arms manner assault. And, you know, I mean, their competition was basically CV-33, so, I mean, you know, you get some armor-piercing rounds on both those, and they're pretty much even. Um, some would fight in Egypt and Libya, and some would also fight against the Japanese in India and the Dutch East Indies. But, you know, by 1944, all tanks left were in training roles, or the most reserved reserves. So, on to the final system of this tank. In terms of tankettes, these were pretty good tankettes. They had good speed and agility, and they were good at cross-country movement, so their role as a mobile machine gun was done well. They served pretty well leading up to World War II in colonial roles. And in World War II, they did all right, mainly because there was a very weak competition. Um, against Japan, they really didn't do well fighting against other tanks. Um, it was better than no tanks, I suppose. And, I mean, you know, for, for that's really the problem with tank cats, which is a separate video. I mean, there's nothing you can really do against anything that was something large than a machine gun. For their intended role, they did pretty well.